fiery derailment of a Norfolk Southern train in East Palestine has sparked concern over drinking water. Yeah, it's especially because contaminants from the train cars made their way into the Ohio River. Local 12's Cassie Arsenault is here to tell us if we need to be concerned. Cassie, how safe is our water supply? Well, Adam, here's a visual aid for all of our viewers at home. Now, the spill happened up here, right where East Palestine is, and these contaminants are only moving a mile an hour right now, diluting and dispersing as they move. Now, they've already passed Wheeling. They are on their way to Huntington, but still three days away, and right now they're only being detected at four parts per billion. Now, for this to be a concern, they need to reach 500 parts per billion, and they haven't even reached Cincinnati yet. They aren't expected to get to us until a week from now so you can drink your water today and even a week from now it's likely these contaminants won't even be detectable when they finally reach the tri-state. That's going to be the story and it's going to be a major story for that community for a long time. It's a nightmare for people who live in the immediate vicinity of the spill. Chemicals seeping into the groundwater are a danger for those with private wells. The spill did flow to the Ohio River. But as for anyone along the Ohio River where the contaminants made their way, they can breathe a sigh of relief. UC's assistant professor, Patrick Ray, whose main research revolves around studying the Ohio River, says it's not a factor in your life. The reason why it goes down in, con in concentration as it goes down the river is because it spreads out, it uh, dilutes, it disperses, and when you do that, the concentration goes down. And the magic word is concentration. We care that there's not too much of a concentration in one place at one time, because that's how we measure risks to human health. And by the time the chemicals reach Cincinnati next week, they will have diluted to undetectable levels that would not be harmful. For this particular contaminant that we are worried about, the butyl acrylate, the contaminant limit that we care about is about 500 parts per billion. And the current level in the Ohio River is about four. So this is not. Close. And as devastating as this all sounds, it's not the first time this has happened. No, it's not. And actually, if harmful chemicals do head our way, we are very well prepared for it. Now, there's a treatment facility. They're not only equipped to hold water for up to two days, but they did exactly that in 2014 for the Elk River spill. That the, there were so many chemicals at that time that it took two days to pass our area. So our treatment facility was able to provide clean water for two for almost over two days. Wow. And not only that, but we can treat it and break down when our water does get contaminated. And that's something that the treatment facilities here in our area practice over the weekend just in case after the spill. And I think it's important to note that you interviewed an independent expert. Yes, this wasn't anyone affiliated with the government or any, um, you know, from the water treatment facility. He's a professor at UC who studies the Ohio River regularly and is always looking into these things. Good to know. Yeah. All right, Cassie, thank you so much. Now, the EPA's complete report on chemicals that were found and where they were located is published at local12.com. Just head there for more information.